something went on here, something went on there. And this time on TNT. We play a brand new game called Microphonies. We play a game called Canteen about Canadian celebrity teenagers. And we announce our latest contest in desperate attempt to give away some TNT swag. That's all coming up right now on TNT. 67. 67 uh, Expos 67. Oh, that's right. Remember? <laughs> no, wait a minute. Was it Expo 76? Uh, <laughs> oh, now you really lo- threw me, but oh I thought my no, it was gosh. Expo 67. Was it? Yeah. Legit. Is it worth a Google? <laughs> Am I thinking Expo 76 was in Montreal? <laughs> But Expo 67, was that Vancouver? What? Vancouver, well, well uh, Expo, yeah, was it, eight, no, it was Expo, in Montreal, Expo, Expo 67. Yeah, Expo 86 was, uh, was, was Vancouver. Oh my God. Remember Expo 86? I remember all the kids going away for, like, well, all the loaded kids in the class. I remember too, yeah. We're leaving for the Expo 86. I didn't get to go to Expo 86. No way. It was Vancouver? No way. Yeah. No chance. Not many kids from the Maritimes went to Expo 86, that's for sure. Yeah. But we were alive for that one, at least. Yeah. I think a lot of folks from the Maritimes went to Expo 67 from the, from the Maritimes to Montreal, because that's, well, I suppose in those days it was probably a 20-hour drive. So be, it's, uh, yeah, so be like... Uh the guy announcing in 69 Jerry Park Stadium the Expos like the first one Jerry that, Park Stadium yeah before the big O in 77 that's when That's where they Whoa. Oh wait a minute. They built the big O for Expo 76, didn't they? I oh guess so. Oh my gosh, is anyone still listening to this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> episode? We're still talking about this. I was just Expo talking about 76. the Expo 76. <laughs> just talking about the Expos. Team Calling one. Expo 76 a cover band is technically correct, but they're a cover band unlike any other out there. Expo 76 is a pop rock band. Expo 67 <laughs> Yeah, but was, we're, you're, we're, don't confuse the uh, six, 76 Olympics with Expo 67. That's the only... That's what's the, the Olympics were in 76. Yes, yes. Okay, therein lies the confusion. See, that's where, because I'm in the land of confusion. So, to yeah, remember um, when Genesis did the video with, who were the puppet people? The, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, what the heck? Spitting image. Yeah. And these are the games we're (laughs) given all. That was, that was such a huge videos, video back in the day, and that was just puppets. Yeah. I guess thinking of the Phil Collins puppet with the big... Classic Schnoz? British mouth. Oh, yeah. Oh, big teeth. Get it British. <laughs> yeah. Stereotypes. Yeah. So, sorry, what does the video celebrate? Uh, stereotypes. <laughs> right. We thought we'd make some puppets to celebrate stereotypes and big teeth and what have you. <laughs> Margaret that Thatcher eating sausage breakfast. You see. We thought we'd celebrate the stereotypes, you see. Um, so to recap, Expo 67 was in Montreal, but the 76 Summer Olympics were in yes, Montreal, too. Yes, that's why and that's stadium. where the Big O was built. Yes. And it was called the Big O O-W-E because it cost so much and it wasn't really worth it. Yes. Although, uh, maybe that was just in the 80s because <laughs> it was a great home for the Expos, right? Yeah, well, it was just a, but it was a real greasy space, man. Did you ever go to an Expos game? I never went yeah. to an Expos game, but I would, you know, watch them all the time growing up. And just that place looked like such a, just a, like just some weird, like it's a flea market and then they have baseball. You know, uh-huh. the world's biggest flea market. Big box, boxy dome. <laughs> um, I kind of liked I mean, it was it was probably my first baseball game. I probably saw an Expos game there before I saw um, a game, a Jays game. So it was kind of a thrill because I, I think, if memory serves, I think it's near La Ronde, which is the outdoor yes 
um, packed amusement. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys ever play at the Big O? No. No, never played the Big O, but what a building. What a Did you play at the Bell Center? Yes, many times. I bet you sold that sucker out. Yeah, sold that one out. Good times. Expo 76 is a cover band, and it's actually a great (laughs) dovetail into a game that I want to play. (laughs) There's a cover band called (laughs) Expo 76? Well, it's... If you if you believe what you read on Wikipedia, it says to call them a cover band is not really fair, even though technically that's what they are. But I was thinking it would be funny for me to give you actual names of actual cover bands, some real, some fake, and you have to guess if it's an actual cover band or if it's one I made up. That's great. Can I? Uh, can, what do we call the game? Let's. What do we? What should we call this? <laughs> uh. Great or fake? Micro, microphone. Microphony. Microphony. Done. Okay. My, so are, are the is, microphone is real? Microphony. Yes. Is it's fake. fake. Okay. So the game's called Microphonies. Microphonies. Because like, I guess they're phonies anyway because they're cover bands. For sure. Okay, you ready? Let's do it. Is there an REM cover band? <laughs> called are we them <laughs> i t- this is a funny story i tried to be in a rem cover band when i was a kid what were you called One of my first i don't remember we never had a name because we couldn't book a gig oh <laughs> and you just did rem I, I remember i was like uh tr- i was really young at 15 16 and uh trying to get, like, a gig in a bar. And the, the, uh, I, I, I almost joined this older cover band. <laughs> Were they an R.E.M. cover band, too, or just whatever's no, going? they did, like, like all the classics, like Whiter Shade of Pale and, like, the classic Aww. rock stuff. They're older dudes, and I was fine playing that stuff. But one, one time I asked the guy, I was like, hey, could you play keyboards and this rem cover band and he was like no <laughs> Listen, the, the next the next time i called I, his daughter answered the phone oh and oh like, you heard his voice in the background but he wasn't he available heard, to come to the phone oh, heard dear. him heard him say he's good he's a, yeah he's not he's in the shower <laughs> and then no, but this is this is that he didn't hear me say that. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> <laughs> Maybe the to, best part is he wanted to further it, right? Like, no, no, tell him I'm on tour in Alberta. And I'll be oh, and the shower for- wasn't enough because he didn't want you to call back. He wheels his dad at you out. That's the worst. <laughs> He's like, I'm, tell him like I'm gone. Like there's no way I'm coming Tag, back. REM isn't exactly known for its no, but drumming. He was, so, he was so not into it that was he, it? Would, he wanted nothing to do with me at all ever again. <laughs> it went beyond not liking REM, and he just <laughs> didn't want you in his universe. Yes. Yes. Oh wow. So the band never got off the ground. <laughs> That's yeah, me in never, the corner. Never, Would have been a we, good name for an REM cover band. Ended up playing like busking and like on the street and in subways. That was it. That's me in the corner. <laughs> the guy, There's a guy who likes his vibrato. The guy, the guy lo- loved it. That was and that was the only voice he could really do. I think there should be on Sesame Street a sheep <laughs> Michael Stipe. That's me in the spotlight. Losing my religion. Was, they were massive. They were massive. And That's I so loved big. R.E.M. Uh, Apparently one of Michael Stipe's big problems is that he can never remember his own lyrics, even when they're in the studio and they're right in front of him. Weird. So yeah. he's always reading them? Yeah, if you read, uh, if, if you listen to, Come try to wake her up, whatever song that is on whatever <laughs> album that is, he says, reading from Dr. Seuss, and he laughs. 
because he got it right after saying Dr. Zeus like a hundred takes in a row. I remember a cover band called <laughs> Runs in Your Hoses, and they were a Guns N' Roses tribute. Was that a real one? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Runs it's close. The thing is, it has to be perfect. <laughs> so is there an REM cover band called Are We Them? Sure, yes. Yes, that's correct. Perfect. Is there an ABBA cover act called Still Bjorn? <laughs> yes. Yes. Definitely. Is there an all female A C D C cover act called A C D She? I'm pretty sure there is, yes. 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 Is there a Counting Crows cover act called Counting Cornrows? (laughs) (laughs) No chance. Oh, There's I'm no so way. proud of it. Oh, it's great. Counting he cornrows. Came on, he came on the scene with that big fucking <laughs> pineapple head. Thing. With the big Chris Kirkpatrick from whatever <laughs> well, that was. <laughs> well, he was the original, like, we, The weekend with that hairdo. Oh, my God. Counting cornrows is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> is there a cover act called Non Jovi? <laughs> yeah, that's too close for sure. Correct. Earthwind for hire. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yes. Yes. I want there to be. Yes. Fleetwood Mock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there a cover a poison cover act called Posen? <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> Yes, there is. No, there is. Posen? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. And they're doing the face. Is there an Oasis cover act called Oasisn't? (laughs) No way. Yes, there is. (laughs) It's awful. It's actually great. Where did you go? Like, agency? (laughs) <laughs> no, I just Googled. Is there a cover act called Nirvana? Yes. Yes. That's... Is there a cover act called Mandana? <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yes, there is. <laughs> Mandana. <laughs> I that would feel mildly uncomfortable much. watching Mandana do like a virgin. <laughs> okay, hold on. But man, Mandana, you can't, can you do that at the chicken deli on a Friday night? <laughs> <laughs> Are people uh, ready for that kind of a party? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a Nickelback cover act called Poor Man Stealing? Poor Man Stealing. I don't know. I'm going to look. I'm looking up Mandana for sure. That's it. I lost it, Mandana. I want. I want to see some YouTube's. I made up poor man stealing, but Mandana is allegedly real. I'm that sure is... Mandana. It's like it's like Man Murray or Man of Green Gables. I'm I know, sure but Man Murray's not real. <laughs> <laughs> man Murray match and his big look. Beard. It's an all. He's got a big hairy face, and he, but he's like just busts into some, one of her jams. All male Madonna cover band, Mandonna. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. No way. Yeah, there might be a. Oh, there is. Here's their cover of "Like a Prayer." No. Yeah. Life is a mystery. <laughs> Everyone must what stand alone. I hear you call my name, and it feels like home. You call my name. It's like really? I'm gonna tell you something. Mandana's good, but it's t- it's just like it turns it into like rock and roll opera. Yeah, it's like Glee. Yeah. This is a clip of Mandana on Fox, so they're not nobody. Wow. What is it, a bunch of people or just one guy? 
Well, it's a bunch of folks. It's dudes, and they all they all look like um, Madonna from different eras. Like one guy's got the the pointy cone bra. Oh man! And another dude's got uh, the wedding dress. But they're like a metal band that does. Uh, I guess Madonna jams. I guess it's a good test to see if it's a good tune. Probably that's the same band that's posing every other week. <laughs> posing. <laughs> yeah. Every rose has its thorn. I. It's almost worth us starting a Counting Crows cover band Counting just to call rose. it Counting Cornrows. Oh my God, that would be great. Alien size rock songs. That's what we say. <laughs> that's Alien what it says si- on the business card. <laughs> Alien size sets. Wheels is dad is our agent. Yeah. Um, tonight's our gig in Halifax, by the way. Oh. And we're doing a version of Eternal Flame by the Bangles. Wow. And it's actually a great way to find out if a song is good, to kind of look at it through a different lens. Mm-hmm. I actually really like that song, as you know, Done It Gord. <clears throat> yeah, well, for sure. And then just, uh, I got to say, the Blind Melon that still cracks me up from last <laughs> week. It's nothing. <laughs> um, let's take a break on TNT. We have another game coming which is called canteen i'm going to play you clips from canadian teenagers and you have to guess who it is canteen Canteen. coming up as episode 67 rolls along to go away where's my beer chair 67 what a year it's been a long december and i have reason to believe Maybe this year could be better than the last. That's the corn- he has a vibrato too that he likes. That's that's actually the counting cornrows. Better that's, than the you last. You know, like when a band comes to town and they put the the songs together of them covering the band, like great Beatles yeah. cover band, and then it shows like they'll play three or four clips of them doing songs. Yeah. In Penny Lane, there is a barber showing photographs. I want to hold your hand. Who's the jam? best Beatles cover act? There is a... Be- there's tons of Beatles jammers go and play. Make millions. Millions. I know you deceive me. Now here's a surprise. 1967 jams? Who is it? The Who. I can see for miles. Who? Is it? Yeah. Who? Who? I saw a, bi- a, a picture of a player named H-U, who, who, and he's on first. Who's on no. first? No. Yeah. Oh my god, I love puns. It's finally <laughs> happened. Abbott, oh my god, Abbott I love and puns. Costello wins one. Oh my god, I love puns. Oh, that's the billions guy again. <laughs> money. Oh my god. Can you smell that money? Put it right under your nose. There must be a Who cover band. Yeah, the Who Who are the Hooligans they're called. The Hooligans? Yeah, they were great. Yeah, the Hooligans, you're right. Yeah. I've seen them. Is this 67? Yeah. Feels like we're oh, at, like man. working at a candy shop. <laughs> Man, this this Otis song Redding makes Jam. my face involuntarily spasm That's into right. like a yeah, like it hurts so good. It does hurt so good. Respect when you come home. That was '67. I would have said that was earlier than that. But this is like when you're working in, the, in your shop and you got all these jams going on. You imagine like the radio, the hits of the day being this kind of stuff. Like Jackie Wilson just bumping through. Couldn't punch the smile off my face when this song's on. (laughs) This is like little kid running home to tell his parents that the girl in class said yes, she'd go to the sock hop with him. Stealing candy. (laughs) He's stealing candy listening to his songs. Yeah. Oh, this is another good 67 jam. Was that 67? Yeah. It's stealing candies. It's taking the sweets. Too many sweets. We would like to put a stop to the stereotypes. <laughs> it's not true that all of our teeth are too big for our mouths, you see. 
Do you have a lozenge? I'd love a lozenge. My Do you throat. happen to have a toothpick I could borrow? I have an entire eight ounce steak trapped between my front teeth, you see. I'll have the steak tips. Man, that's a great song. You don't like this marmalade? You don't know what you're missing? <laughs> How about jealous British guy when the Beatles came out? He's like, they're all right. They're all right. They're fine. I wouldn't go they're see them right. live, but I guess it's all right. Put on the hi-fi. I don't understand why anyone would want to go stand around in that terrible racket. All the screaming from the Being girls. bashing, smashing it with the long hair, please. <laughs> it's hardly civilized, I should say. <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> it's hardly civilized, I should say. Imagine if the word dashing. <laughs> <Say that. laughs> I don't see their personal charm myself. <laughs> <laughs> Filling teenage girls' heads with terrible thoughts. <laughs> really? Like, for some reason, he has like half his lungs full of air left at the end of the sentence. Terrible, if you ask me, I should say. And all the dart smoke coming out. Yeah. The king that he's talking. Would you like a girl walls? They would have, they'd have a dart in their mouth while they're eating eggs in the morning. Beatlemania is the most famous Beatles cover band, right? Egg, beans, and toast, love. How about this comment? <laughs> Cuckoo could childish, if you ask me. (laughs) (laughs) Cuckoo could childish. (laughs) Beatlemania is the biggest Beatles act. 67 for Penny Lane, huh? Yeah. Hmm. But it's not, it doesn't ever, it doesn't stop. Because then the Stones had Ruby Tuesday. Oh. The song that's bond an entire chain of restaurants. You don't have to be so s- soppy, you know. We can write some hits and shag all the girls and just who cares? <laughs> I don't understand why his trousers must be so small. <laughs> He's like a spider in his trousers. What's with the guess up and the lips? I simply don't understand why he must wear mascara. <laughs> These are just a ball. I wish they would gather moss and disappear. <laughs> That's the weakest Rolling Stones desk ever. They're all on drugs. <laughs> Clearly, they're all on drugs. I don't understand why it has to be so uncivilized is the thing you say. <laughs> and then uh, Buffalo Springfield's a good jam for oh, that same year. <laughs> the little Crosby. Man. Or sorry, uh, Stephen Stills with Neil Young. Pounding it. That's a great song. Yeah. Not so bad, eh? A year working in the candy shop. Just let this ride for a minute. How many times has this been used in a soundtrack? It's great. I would be interested in Jeremy Taggart's like walk through the history of music. That would be really an interesting TV show. It's like it's PBS for sure, but I would watch it. <laughs> this is the same equivalent of like remember because how banged up uh, everybody thought that Jim Morrison was, and he wasn't. Well, he was. I'm just saying the same equivalent of like the the British looking down upon the young Brits, as opposed to the Americans going, "The hell's this? <laughs> Who the hell is this kid getting all drunk on the TV talking about sex?" Well, what year? Like, what year was Austin Powers set? What's was that? that like '67? Yeah, definitely. That was that era, right? Austin Powers, yeah. <laughs> Man. Oh, be high. Like, 
<laughs> that would have been a fun time to live in London. <laughs> Remember uh, the guy in the cover band? He was jamming this always. The guy who said he's in the shower, but then out Oh, up. yeah. <laughs> I saw him do, doing this one with the big, huge organ. <laughs> he loved this jam. Yeah, he did. <laughs> But this is an unbelievable year. I have Annie Lennox's version of this. It might come as no surprise. This is the thing. Being in a cover band is like karaoke in that it's the wrestling match between the song you want to do and the song the people want to hear. <laughs> yeah. You you have to do good old-fashioned rump shakers or every song has to be a, oh, my God, remember? <laughs> I think, if you're going to pull it off. Because I don't think anybody wants to see this perform, do they? <laughs> this is your whole 67 wrapped up in a nutshell, bud. Music was just bursting. Can't believe them. Even the shit music was great back then. The monkeys. I'm trying to remember. What, oh, then I saw I saw her face, right. Is that, that's a monkeys. Yeah. And I'm a believe. So could they play? Well, it was all session players. It was all wrecking crew. Really? Guys. So they just they just did the vocals. Yeah, I think that's like Hal Blaine's and the Jim Gordons and all you know the all the wrecking crew. It's the best in the biz. Carol so they K. were the first. Boy, were they the first boy band? Well, they were the first TV band. In a sense, and the, it was based right. on because of the popularity of the Beatles, it was out of control. So they started to, uh, they, it was so big that the Americans put a TV show together. They were, they they were actors first that were cast, and the, you know they even like auditioned a bunch of people, different artists, and came up with those guys. And the show was the pretty fun. Archies released Sugar Sugar. That was 69. And they have the distinction of being the first not real band to reach number one. Not real band? Yeah, they weren't a real band. They were session guys too, but session guys for a cartoon, which is even weirder. Yeah, well, the association apparently was that too. They were kind of like, they had a run of hits, but it was always just the wrecking crew playing everything. I don't know that band. They were massive. What, yeah, what like, is an association song? Everyone knows that it's windy. What? What? I don't know that song. Here, let me give you a quick rip of uh, the association. Rip me some association real quick, will you, Bob? Yeah, let me get you some association. Maybe you can do don't do the opening of the Expo Stadium in 1969. What was the name of the stadium? <laughs> uh, I think it was Frank Stadium first. Frank? Yeah, Frank. What was it? You said Frank something. Jerry Park, totally way off. Jerry Park Stadium. Oh Jerry gosh. Park. Mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, bon après-midi, et bienvenue à Jerry Park Park. <laughs> it's a beautiful day for baseball. On va jouer cet après-midi à votre expo de Montréal. Could you believe how much he came aboard? John Gibbons. Yeah. They really do that. This song is, uh, I think this is 67, too. It was. It's Jim Gordon on drums. You know this one. I have to hear the chorus. Never My Love doesn't ring a bell. No, but I love it. Oh, it's, it's classic. Easy That's listening. the association. Yeah. We'll save the Expos thing for episode 69, because it was 1969, I guess, they started, was it? Yeah, for sure. Um, numero 14, number 14, Roy Facism. <laughs> Roy Face. 5'8", 155 pounds. He's my new favorite all-time baseball player. Not Angel Salazar? 
No, Roy Face. About, Face is the new Salazar. Hey, people love Gr- Gary G- <laughs> Gugatomy. <laughs> <laughs> they love the golfer Greg Gary Gugatomy. <laughs> Gugatomy, kidding me? Look at this guy. Gugatomy you- again <laughs> into three feet. Are you kidding me? This is great. Gugatomy, it's two hundred and seventy yards out. He has three. Well, there's no way he's gonna get to this green. Oh my gosh! Go down! Be kidding me! <laughs> the look on Jordan Spieth's face. Oh man, the poor kid. As Willett's putting on the jacket. Yeah. I mean, the poor it's, kid who made millions of dollars and won it last year, right? Yeah, he's still twenty-two. But still, and it's, 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 it like totally came out that he's twenty-two. I said he went grade nine on on in the whole Butler cabin experience. Why did people not know he was twenty-two? Oh, everyone knows that he just act, he usually acts like he's forty the way he talks right. in the press and everything. He's very composed and seems happy and nice, but he was best. Yeah, he was really as bummed. as you would be. But he was kind of he couldn't get it past it. He, he was just like, no. I don't want to be here, and I don't know why they're forcing me to be here, kind of thing. Yeah. When it's like, yeah, that's the thing, man. Being gracious in defeat, yeah. All usually those, I've, all I those figured, greats have it. I figured that uh, he would be okay, but that was the worst jacket ceremony, and like I don't think I've ever seen that before, where the guy's actually like really Surly. angry. Even yeah, even Faldo was all smiles putting it on. Like, why I, is Faldo notoriously ornery? Well, he was always a tough guy and kind of angry when he lost, but. I mean, nobody. I've never seen that where it's like putting on the jacket. And I mean, Bernard Longer, when he puts on the, the jacket to Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholas in 1986. Yeah. When he won his sixth. Like, he's crying, I think, when he's putting it on. <laughs> Longer was in the hunt this he weekend. He was in the hunt, yeah. He was two shots. He had a great Saturday, right? He had a great whole week. He was just yeah. grinded it out. But he's 58 that years kind old. Of guy, 58. Suddenly, yeah. 58's not that old. But let's not forget uh, Danny Willett shot 67 with no bogeys on a Sunday at, at a major. And Unbelievable. I think probably everybody was thinking four or five under would have a chance. So he, he probably had that in mind, and he nailed what he was trying to do. So I wouldn't say it was Spieth's gift as much as he just ground it out, and it was difficult to play under par on the weekend there was everybody was falling apart and the wind was bad i mean you also have to assume that there's a certain freedom that comes from being will it and knowing no one expects it in the world so yeah. you might as well gun for it whereas but that's the thing if i was speeth every time i was in my backswing i would have my inner critic would be lighting me up right oh bud better get yeah. together because well, this shot's gonna still, see yeah he's 22 Shink. he's 22 so he's never really he's kind of everyone thought he would get past and never had that in him where he would choke but that's he needed everybody. earl woods to throw some balls at his ankles yeah when he was three well he was uh, yeah that was like a shut out the ago. distractions so so yeah he's gonna have a tough couple of weeks to try and get his head together for the u.s open yeah but the masters is the biggest deal right it's such a big deal i mean well yeah. it's just because the year starting and it's just such a beautiful place. I went down there in 2005 and walked it To watch? Walked Did you really? And it was beautiful. It's just a cool experience. The locals are really nice people. Who did you walk with? I was down like there the- with Laird, Laird White, yeah. our boy Lairdo, uh, Tim Palmer, and Al Palmer, Tim's brother, uh, who worked at, in, the, uh, in the pro shop at, at Augusta at the time. Wow. He's so now, do people, now he's out in Shaughnessy and, uh, in Vancouver now. Do you pick a player and walk the round with them? Or do you kind of hang out by 16 for a while? This is you how you do it. When you go, that, if you're going to go to the Masters. Do you mean, this is how you do back it. Am I, I'm late. back? You're late. I'm late again? Yeah. Why do I hear it so... I, I don't know why that doesn't ever work. Give works. me a this is how you do it and I'll show you how it's done. This is how we do it. Back, dock, <laughs> I'm screwing up the... This is how we do back it. Back, dock, dock, I got you every time, Holmes. Here, how do you do it? I go, uh, what do you mean? So you sing it and I'll try and No, I mean it. the walking of Augusta. 
Oh, this is how you do it. <laughs> I'm like, back, back, this is how you do it? <laughs> you, uh, you go early, like on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and you walk around for the practice rounds and par three contests and all that stuff. Because there's nobody there. Like, you can walk the course and, and see it. You know, there's people there, but you can get around. It's not stacked. But you're allowed? Like, you could follow yeah, Rory you if you wanted anywhere. to? There's, there's pretty much, you, you can cross and go through anywhere. Crazy. End up in the woods. How do they monitor, like, so you're not walking across the fourth fairway when someone's in their backswing? That's what the ropes are for. Ah. You got to get around those ropes. And they'll kick you off pretty quick. Yeah, for sure. And then you sit like, but uh, the the Augusta, the sit like the actual city is really cool. It's different and, and old school. Good eats. What an experience! Did you like? Do do people get banged up over the course of the day, or it's yeah. very low key well, and respectful? No, I don't think. Yeah, it's not like uh, the Phoenix Open. It's just normal. You don't see people banged up, and I think if they get banged up, they get escorted out of there pretty quickly. Why was, is the Phoenix Open for? Shirts off parties? Oh, it's insanity. Is it? It's like a frat party. Tall boys <laughs> blasting really? everywhere. Yeah. Just oh, ripping man. it up, getting right P11. Things. P11, yes. Just partying. Yep. Um, oh, what a wow. cool experience that must have been. This could, yeah, that's like an Easter egg for, uh, for that P11 story. For folks, yeah. If yep. you really dig deep, you might get closer. Um, so on the, as it gets to be the weekend and you're walking Augusta, do you just pick a plate, get there early, pick a place no, and stay no, there I, to watch everybody go through? You hang out and, and, uh, I, I was, uh, done. I, I left before the actual tournament Ah, because uh, you don't see anything. Right. So I was happy to walk it all and see it all, but I didn't want to get stuffed in on the weekends. Right. So maybe go Thursday just to get a feel for the tournament more. But uh, it's better to, to just go somewhere else or, I don't know, unless you have some VIP area on 16 or something where you're... VIP 11, yeah. But there's not really that much... There's no space really put around on that golf course. It's all the way it used to be. It's pretty old school. Looks like Duffy played Augusta yeah. the day after the tournament. They have, yeah, they have a press kind of. Uh, they fire out the bingo for press, and they and you get your ha- name in a hat, and they pick you out. And a couple guys, Adam Stanley, I know he got in there. Uh, he's a golf writer. So there's uh, and Duffy, Jerry D played there a couple years back. Right? Did he? Yeah. As but Jerry play, D sports reporter, the, maybe the member tees, which is like sixty three hundred yards. It's a lot different. Whoa. Um, Why? What do the pros play? It's like seventy five hundred yards. So like the wow. par fours can be four hundred and sixty five yards uphill, but the member tees are like three fifty. Right. So it's it's. So you'd be on the green on your tee shot. Well, no, you, you, the, some well if people that pound it have certain things like that. It, they can hit it further, but it's not dry. Everything isn't drivable. It's more just... It looks like the greens are brutal. You just have to be smart, to be honest. You have to know where to hit it because the greens are so up and down and undulated. I I, I would... Uh, it doesn't really matter how far you are because once you're on that green, like three putting is real easy. And they had, right. the, they had the pins, the Sunday pins for that turn, for the, uh, the press day. That would be... Wow, uh, that would have been challenging. Yeah, I... I so once you're on the green, you're putting it, and if you're above the hole, you put it, and it goes off the green. So well, I saw Duffy said the... that the, like the caddy was so helpful, but he would say, like, actually aim at 15 feet to the left of where you're aiming it right yeah, now. Yeah, oh, for sure. There's all kinds. They don't of even make sense. Weird breaks that you don't, and it, you wouldn't believe how high the mounding is. Like it's like you're standing on one part of the green, and it goes up six feet. Whoa. Just four to ten feet away from you you know and then that... make anyone look like an amateur bot oh for sure hey you hey let's play... take a quick break, break and then we'll play moly. canteen crunch 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 thanks a lot baby <laughs> get out of here <laughs> don't let the door hit you on the way out crunch 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 let's play a game jonathan canteen seven 
Canteen. Sometimes it starts with a name, and the name of this one it was inspired, obviously. <laughs> like we do, can- Canadian cannot Ian. Or yes. um, I played that with Steve Dillon one night on the. Did you? Ten ten. It's yes. fun. It Gagnas is fun. Or Gagnos, it's t- sometimes it starts with yeah, a good yeah. name. Gagnas <laughs> or Gagnos or Gagnon is a little bit like. There's not a lot you can go. You can only play that so much. I know it's fifty fifty. <laughs> I but wish the there best was more. Games have a play along factor, so for folks no, listening, they, they can try to guess you, too. You know what we should try to find is like an in depth or a long, like a long clip, like a, a full length film or something of Andre Philippe Gagnon. Yeah, APG. So we can you. We can have a better quality to play the game with. Yeah, because it's hard to find clips, and because he's known, he's known to go through like 20 in a night right yeah i think anyway but some of them like some of the clips that are on the internet are like here he is doing brian mulrooney so it's it's not necessarily timely it was timely at the time <laughs> it's, but now it kind of gives only, it away it's still i know why don't we why don't we do him just doing other people too why does it have to be music <laughs> well hawking talking was another kind of game like that like when you had Hawking saying, snap it up, flip it, and rub it down. Like, I'm pretty sure that's you as Stephen yeah. Hawking. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so this game is called Canteen, and it's very simple. We're going to give each other a clue of who this Canadian teenager was. In in my case, they obviously might not still be teenagers, but they're famous Canadians, and this material is from when they were teenagers. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they might be 50 now, but this material is from when they were teenagers. That's Some that, of them are yeah, currently teenagers. We're going to center on that, I think. Okay. Who's going first? <clears throat> you go first, because you have the clips, and I have the printed material. Okay. This one, um, well, it, it doesn't require much explanation. Which canteen <laughs> is this? I think uh, it's tough to get yourself prepared in a city like Atlanta or L.A. and come in places like Toronto and Edmonton, Montreal. It's just hockey feeling all the time. Uh, you walk down the street, kids are playing hockey and that kind of <sighs> That's when he's a teen. Who? Gretzky? Yes. <sighs> That's when he's a teenager? It's his interview. Yeah, he was 18. It was his interview with Dave Hodge the night he scored six points. <laughs> I don't know if you watched the Farewell to Rexall place, but there was an interview with I did. Gretzky at the first intermission. He's great. Yeah. Like, I, how about, I'd forgotten how but, charming and engaging he can be. He was talking about um, his dad wanting to come out to not miss his 50 goals in 50 games or whatever it was. And uh, he Wayne told him not to come, and then he ended up scoring it, you know, six goals the night before or something. And your, your, uh, your bod pointed out the picture of the imprint on the door for us on our Twitter feed. How about that? Yeah, he did. Ryan Frankson, um, which was awesome. There's a bunch of buds that work for the Oilers that listen to the potty. Uh, Tom Gazzola, Chris Westcott, Ryan Frankson, they're um, good buds and buds of the show and also on the inside as far as uh, oil yeah. country goes. It's good to have you're buds all, along. You know. Sports so buds all, are always solid buds. You have your, uh, yeah, you have the inside scoops. Not really, because they're also uh, very professional and, um, uh, you know, wouldn't share inside. <laughs> I didn't secrets. mean it in like a bad, bad way. No, I know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is kind of fun to, to know folks that work with the organization. Uh, so I got Gretz. You got Gretz. You got that right. Okay. You got yours. I don't have a clip. Okay. But this is tough. Because it's... <laughs> That this guy d- didn't really do anything other than stuff later in his life. Okay. Uh, he uh, he was born in '65, and he had uh, over 900 episodes of TV shows to his credit. But he was famous for one two-person show in the '80s. It's hard to give any more clues other than that it was six seasons and widely syndicated. Okay, can I ask a couple of questions? Yeah. Um, was the show big in Canada or the U.S.? I think it was big in Canada, but uh, a like, few was it other made in the U.S.? Well, no, it was made in Canada. 
It was, and it was a two-person show. Do you want? I can give you some of the people that are on the show with him. Okay. <clears throat> Marnie McPhail. Okay. <laughs> Does that ring a bell? No. S- Sunny Basin Thrasher. <laughs> Directors or, or sorry, creators Michael Hirsch and Patrick Lubair. Dang. I mean, <laughs> the, uh, okay, I'm going to talk it out. 80s, mid 80s. Two person show. The first one that came yeah. to mind was the Edison Twins. You got it. No. <laughs> yes. Whoa. You know, you crushed it. Wow. And the guys, the the what the guy was Andrew Sabaston. Sab- Sabaston. Amazing. <laughs> I never would have known his name, but I was thinking yeah, like he was, Wayne and he Schuster. Was a, no, they were much older than that. I thought that for a minute definitely. it might be nine hundred two one zero because I thought you meant Priestley, but that was nineties. Yeah. Sure, he had a tough time walking around Toronto. In not, oh, it was one of the Edison twins. No kidding. Tough one. They were everything. He ended up writing all kinds of like kids shows that our kids watch now, like uh, Truck Town. Really. And my big, big friend. I love that show. My daughter watches Little Charmers, I'm sure. My daughters do, like too. That one. Max and Ruby, Little Bear. Wow, like he's written night. on everything. Just crushing it, Arthur. One of the Edison twins. Look at him go. Just going. Kay. Babar and Badu. Here's your um, here's your next canteen. She's not a teen anymore, but this is from when she was a teen on a TV show. And you have to listen because the audio quality is poor and she doesn't talk much. Ready? Yeah. That you and I might hit it off after all. <sighs> really, Alanis? Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, I blew myself I up. I'm liking you, but now you'll be. Did Alanis. You... Yeah. You, all, you love Alanis. Listen to this. For these I think games. that you and I might hit it off after all. <sighs> really, Alanis? Are you serious? Yeah. I had just begun liking you, but now you'll be away on tour most of the year. <laughs> She sounds the same. No, I know. You love her so much. Yeah. I I'm want to see fan. if I could get y'all riled up. Get me riled up? Yeah. Well, she kicked me off stage one day. I know. I see, it's working. Them, so that's I take that stuff. I remember it. Of course. She didn't need to do that. <laughs> no, not just that. She no just... more transparent dangling carrots, Alanis. Come too, on. Too much... Too much art, artistry yeah. going on for my scene. Eh, okay, hit me with my next clue. Okay. So you're two for two, in part because I blew myself up. But you would have gotten yeah. it. But I would have. I'm gonna start guessing Atlantis, Atlantis every time. And you Canadian. can't do that on television. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This actor uh, was on a famous show for almost uh, ten years at least. Okay. He. Uh, Grew up in front of our eyes, I guess you could say. Okay. He had some problems with alcoholism. Uh, did grow up with alcoholic parents. Fell into some type 1 diabetes. Jesus. Uh, they were a- a- aggravated by the drinking. And uh, he died of a heart attack in a tenement in Hamilton. Oh, my God. In Ontario. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't know we Who's were doing... Who's your canteen? That is, that's the canteen. I didn't Who know we were it? doing the downer edition of canteen. Well, you know, it's just, sorry. That's got to be Wheels. That's Neil Hope. You want me to... You don't me to yeah, you don't think perfect. You got it. I didn't want me to ask the question again. I learned two things, though. I, le- I didn't know that he was a diabetic, and I didn't know that alcohol exacerbates diabetes. Yeah. I guess there's the so much sugar in alcohol. Keep up with the insulin injections. Aww. Man, what what a great tragedy that was! You don't like to hear about people going out that way. No, you um, don't. Who's this canteen? This is their first ever interview with Entertainment Tonight in 1983. I had no idea really what I was doing until about maybe a year ago. Man, that who's sounds that? like that was fast. Can I hear it again? Yes, but I'm afraid to play it again because I don't want Because you're going to get blown up again? Okay, it's the same clip, so listen carefully. Yeah. I had no idea really what I was doing until about maybe a year ago when, when, uh, when oh, is uh, that people Bird started telling me that that's what was special about me, that that, uh, that my face is real weird. 
Who's that? Calling you. Is that oh, Burton they... Cummings? No, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey. Yeah. Oh my God, that's a stretch. I would never. Some for some reason I thought it was a young Burton Cummings. People started telling me what was um, special about me was the things I can do with my face. His that first interview with lost. ET in 1983. <laughs> I was like, I don't ever remember Burton sounding so humble. Imagine. I know. Oh, my face was kind of funny. Look, he was always the opposite. Oh, I'm walking down the street seeing people with mustaches and my hair. <laughs> Did he say that? Yeah. No. Basically, yeah. So I changed it up. I, you know, I'm the I totally went the other way. Can't copy me. Oh man. Um. Okay, I stymied you. Here's my chance to tie it up. Who's your next canteen? I'm worried that uh, this one might be too difficult to uh, get. Okay, it's good. We're getting harder. Yeah. She began her acting career when she was three. Uh, she was born in 1971. Okay. In Victoria, B.C. Megan follows. No. I had to go swing for the fences, but how crazy know, would that yeah, have been? That would have been, well, it would have been too obvious in my opinion. Okay. Oh, okay. That's, more, especially if I said it was difficult. It's more obscure, okay. She's well known as a TV series regular cast member in a show that was uh, in the mid-80s from 1985 to 90, I would say. Okay. Based on the West Coast. Okay. And uh, they flew a plane. Okay. So, so you know the show, right? Yeah, Danger Bay, Ocean Hellman. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. He crushed it. Bam. Boom. Ocean Hellman. The plane born, gave it away. Born Crystal Ocean Supri Heavenly Blue Sky Hellman. Is that on true? On November 8th. I'm not kidding. Read her name again. Crystal Ocean Supri Heavenly Blue Sky Hellman. To people who were baked out of their minds. Yeah. Yeah, we grew up in the middle of the forest because my dad's intake was far too much for the city. We <laughs> so <he's, laughs> we grew up in a hollowed out tree surrounded by cast members of the animated show The Raccoons. Yeah. Because we were I don't baked. Remember, I, remember, I remember eating oatmeal and smelling bong hits. This canteen... This clip comes not short, not long after she was discovered, um, but it goes by fast, and it's 1992 when this person had one line on a soap opera before her breakout role on a huge series. See if you can get it. It's a Hail Mary. Ready? Yeah. The voice is pretty recognizable, though. Okay. I don't know why, but unfortunately... That's exactly what happened. Oh, okay. So is that uh, like Nev Campbell? Close. It's a great guess. Unfortunately, it's wrong. Is it? Is it uh, Alan Page? No. This person was discovered at a BC Lions game. Oh, I remember that story. That's the Pam answer. Yeah, listen. I don't know why, but unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. A guest yeah. shot on Days of Our Lives in 1992. That was her first... Uh, when she was a canteen. TV. Yeah, but it was the year that, that she blew up on Baywatch. Yeah. This is there fun, canteen. I like it. Okay, this guy wasn't... Um, is an American, but this show was a big show in Canada. A CTV production. He was American, but it was big on CTV. American. Yeah, was, Okay. But it was on that show that everybody knew him in Canada. Callum father Keith Rennie. Played. What? Callum Keith Rennie on Due South. The, fa the, the father was Derek McGrath, another Canadianity classic. His brother was in Going Down the Road, right? Yep. <clears throat> That's, uh, does that ring a bell? No. Or, actually, uh, I don't think that he was the father. That might help you. Was he the, I don't think he is, is he? But he was a scientist. The kid? The father guy. The, the Derek McGrath character. On the, sh on the show? He was a scientist. Scientist. Can I ask Dr. three Benjamin? questions? 
Dr. Benjamin Jeff Coat. So yeah, I would have made him a Greek character whose name was like Labby. So he it's would have been Dr. Lab Coat. Yeah, he's basically a Dr. Lab Coat buddy. Can I ask three questions? Yes. Kid show or adult show? Teen show. And Children and young people. Big in which decade? Oh, uh, late 80s. Is is this actor still working? Yes. Big star in the States. Well, it's light. Ran from 88 to 91. Man. Dad was a scientist. It's not his dad. It's his bud down the street. Oh, his bud was a scientist. It's not Big Wolf yeah. on campus. But it, No, but the guy's old. Like his older bod down the street who's a scientist. I don't know. He's hit with a photon beam, causing him develop to develop superpowers. I don't know. I'm stumped. He carries around aerosol spray containers and uses them to move through the air. It sounds <laughs> awesome, yeah. but I have no recollection of it whatsoever. <laughs> my my secret identity. Oh wow! <laughs> remember him flying around with the cans? No, I remember the name of the show and that it existed, but I I've never seen it before. Good one. He's, what was the kid's he's name? Cruising, cruising around Toronto and fucking spray cans, like looking around. <laughs> what was the kid's name? The kid? Yeah. Andrew. What was the the actor's name? Oh, oh, sorry, Jerry O'Connell. Oh wow! Yeah, totally forgot that part. He yeah. has a brother, Charlie, right? And one of them, I think it's Jerry, who's married to Rebecca Romaine Stamos. Yeah, yeah. And was Jerry the one who was the portly kid in Stand by Me? I think he was. Yeah. Yeah. Was he Wasn't portly he? on my secret identity? Was he was he in was he in uh, Stand by Me? Yeah, he was. He was the one of the O'Connells. Yeah. Was yeah, he was. That's him. Are you looking it up? Sometimes I get him confused with the fat kid from the Goonies, but he's not. That's fat fair. Kid. Stand by Me <laughs> O'Connell. Yeah, that's him. Is it Jerry? Yeah, Jerry O'Connell. Jerry. Yeah, Jerry. And he was also in a Frosted Flakes commercial that was famous. Wow. Um, and that, who then who's Charlie O'Connell? Who is Charlie O'Connell? What's well, his brother, but he was a thing too, wasn't he? That's his younger brother who is Dude, where's my car? The new guy. Right. He's kind of a Frank Stallone styles. I feel Sliders. badly about Sl- Sean William Scott. He was on The Bachelor. Charlie O'Connell was? Yeah. Like, as the guy looking for a thing? I don't know. I don't watch that show, so maybe. Wow. He's a reality television personality. Wow, you're missing out, bud. Did you see it? Um, I, No, I didn't see that uh, rendition of The Bachelor. Do you want me to look it up? No, it's okay. Sean William Scott was robbed of the career that, that he deserved. Stifler, because he was in Dude, Where's My Car, right? Stifler. He's a funny dude, and he didn't ever really get his due. He didn't yeah, ever get his he due. he never did? What's up with that? I don't know. Because he's pretty good, right? He's a good actor, isn't he? Um, Like when he does other stuff? Yeah, I guess. Like for that kind of, like, I could see him. Like, he's done a lot of those kids' movies. I could see him being the dad in a billion kids' movies. Yep. I could see that, too. He was in Role Models, Cop Out in 2010. Mm-hmm. And he's in the Ice Age franchise. That's a nice Oh, check. that's good. Yeah, that'd be good dough. Um, okay. <laughs> I have I have three clips left, but I won't play them all. Maybe I'll play two of them. Um, this one is, well, here's a canteen. Who is this? You ready? Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the whole tournament was a bit of a highlight for me. I'm, I'm happy with the way I played, and I feel like... Uh, you know, I improved throughout the weeks, and uh, but I'm always disappointed when I lose, for sure. Um, that should give it away. Eugenie Bouchard. Yeah. Uh-huh. Eugenie Bouchard. Eugenie Bouchard, what happened to you? All right, here comes um, this canteen. I won't give you any clues. I think he's still working today. 
You ready? Yeah. And this is from 1990. Listen closely. I'm sorry. I just assumed you were fine. Who's that? Jay Baruchel. Close. That's it. That's all I got. It's me on Street Sense, bud. Oh, it's you, you son of a gun. 1990, listen. You're the OG. Listen to my voice. It's so high and effective. Let me hear it again. I'm sorry. I just assumed you were fine. That's some good acting right there, bud. Sounds nothing like you. I know. That's hilarious. That's like when you hear Dan O'Toole when he does that C C K J E D. It's so great. He's so tentative and uncertain. It sounds nothing like his voice. It's hilarious. It's kind of great. After a while, you hear it. If you if you go for a bit, like oh wait a minute, that's Toolsy. Let's take a break on TNT sixty seven. More to come. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere for freak's sakes. Hey Jonathan, it's been a while since we've done a contest, and when we did Two Faced, it was so exciting and fun it was it was so my basement still, has a few boxes of tnt merch in it left over from our I, tour let's give some yeah, away i want to for sure and uh i still remember steve nolton nash so i know i still remember must... katie lang <laughs> there were some great ones um celine dion of course so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna put it out to our listeners to come up with the best canadian cover band name but because yes. the name is too easy, it has to be a name and some type of photoshoppery. Make a poster for your cover band, and we'll consider venue, city, name, overall picture. Yeah. And the three best will get some TNT swag. And, and, and just to throw a spin on this, you can send, like, because if sometimes you can, you'll see something real that's better than that you, could, you couldn't, couldn't make up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we should maybe allow real cover bands okay there could be some classic pictures or people that are just doing it like mandana right or (laughs) like we were just saying cover boy is about the best canadian cover band name you can come up with so of the cover boy ilk but you have to use the hashtag tnt cover band you won't be included Mm -hmm. unless you use the hashtag tnt cover band so we can find them we'll judge them and we'll announce next week which three folks are going to get some tnt swag in the mail Love it. Fun. Fantastic. Good, Good chatting, times. bot. That's 67, 67 in the can. Love it. I'll talk to you soon, bot. Take care, bot. Boom, gong, gang, go, get, doom, gong. Juvo, bot. Doom, 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 do